Despite having a shader in Blender specifically dedicated to glass, it's still an extremely difficult material to master. In this video, I'll show you the three simple steps necessary to get beautifully realistic glass in both Cycles and EV every time. And the interesting thing is, it's not really about the materials. Here I have a simple cup we can add our glass material to. If you'd like to practice with this model, you can grab a free copy from my Gumroad, link in the description, or stick around to the end and I'll walk you through how I built this. Because as it turns out, the model is really important and it may be the number one reason that your glass materials aren't looking realistic. Open up a new window and switch to the shader editor and click new to create a new material. You have a choice here. You can either use the default principled BSDF shader or you can use the more simple glass BSDF shader. If you're using cycles, feel free to use the glass shader. It will work perfectly in cycles, but there's some additional steps if you're using Eevee and it's easier to set up with the principled shader. So for this tutorial, I'll use the principled shader. You'll notice a lot in this tutorial, I use a few keyboard shortcuts. These shortcuts come as part of the Node Wrangler add-on, which for some reason still isn't enabled by default. If you don't already have it enabled, go to Edit, Preferences menu, go to the Add-ons tab and search for Node and make sure that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled. You can now use the shortcut Control, Shift and left click on a node to preview it in the viewport. To make the principled shader look like glass, we need to tweak a couple of settings. Firstly, set the transmission to 1, Set the roughness to zero. The IOR or index of refraction can be set anywhere from around 1.45 to 1.55 with higher values making for slightly denser glass. The difference in appearance is very subtle though, so unless you have some specific needs, feel free to leave this at default. Finally, the base color is set just below white by default, so turn it all the way up to pure white to get rid of the slightly dark looking glass. You'll notice at this point that our glass looks eh, kind of dull. That's because glass is a transparent, reflective and refractive surface, and without a world to reflect, glass just looks kind of weird. We could take the time to model an entire scene around our glass for it to reflect, but it's far simpler to add an HDRI to light our scene. There's a ton of free HDRIs available online these days. One of my personal favourite websites is Ambient CG, and I'll add a link to this indoor HDRI in the description. Once downloaded, back in Blender, go to the World tab and create an environment texture note. Plug the color output of the texture into the color input of the background node. You can then click open and find the HDRI you downloaded. Hopefully now your glass is looking fantastic, but if you're noticing some weird dark patches, just make sure you have enough glossy or transmission bounces in your light paths. These settings determine how many times your digital light rays can pass through an object, and in our case, the glass has a front and a back, as well as thickness. So that's a minimum of four times a light ray needs to pass through. Generally, setting each to about 8 is enough, but keep in mind that the more glass surfaces you have, the more bounces you'll need, as well as potentially increasing the total bounces. By now, your glass material should be looking perfect, and that's a problem, because realistic materials are never perfect. If you want to add more realism to your glass, I recommend adding some smudges. It's very rare for glass to be this perfect, and to make this pop, I want to add some fingerprints. Now, it's possible to make your own fingerprints, but there's plenty available online for free. So let's go back to Ambient CG. There'll be a link to a fingerprint material in the description. Add an image texture node and choose your fingerprint texture. This may work by default if your glass already has UVs set up. If not, create a texture coordinates node by using the Control T shortcut. Plug the object output into the vector. Changing the flat setting to box will wrap the texture properly and give a small amount of blend to get rid of any seams. You can then plug this into the roughness slot of your material. If the effect is too subtle, you can add a color ramp in between and adjust it to suit. The effect should be subtle though, so don't overdo it. That's all we need for cycles. Let's have a look at the EV render settings. Now, EV is a much more simple render engine than cycles and as such has some limitations. It's built more for speed than it is for accuracy. It handles things like reflections differently and there's gonna be some additional settings we're going to want to turn on. Make sure screen space reflections is enabled in your render settings and specifically enable refractions underneath that as well. Then go to the material settings and under the settings menu, enable screen space refractions for the material as well. Keep in mind, you'll need to enable this setting for any new glass materials you create. Another limitation is that EV can't render a glass surface behind another glass surface. So we're losing all of our transparency here. To solve this, we'll need a simple workaround. We'll need to mess with the alpha, and this is why we're using the principal shader rather than the glass shader. But by default, alpha doesn't work in EV either. Fortunately, this is just a setting we need to turn on. 
Back in the Material tab, you'll see the Blend mode. Switch that from Opaque to Alpha Hashed. Avoid Alpha Blend, it can introduce some weird glitches. It's also worth turning on Alpha Hashed for the shadows. This will be less noticeable, but it will allow for softer shadows coming through your glass. This is looking really good, but there's still more we can do to make it look more realistic. Currently, it's missing what's known as Fresnel. This is a natural effect where the more an object is angled away from the camera, the greater the reflection. It's easiest to see on a body of water or looking at car paint. With transparent glass, it's a little harder to notice, but the lack of Fresnel is really holding our material back here. So let's add a Fresnel node and connect it to the alpha on our shader. I don't want to mess up the nice cycle shader we've already created, so I'm going to duplicate it and move it to one side for now. Keep this around because I'm going to show you a little unknown trick later on. Now you should see that the middle of the glass is mostly transparent, but the edges are largely reflective. This is much better, but I would like to tweak the transparency a little. Add a color ramp between the Fresnel and the material and set it to B-spline. This will make the transition from glass to transparent a little bit more subtle. I'll then push the black value up ever so slightly to about 0.01 to make the middle slightly more transparent. Finally, and this one is optional, I found that cranking up the metallic, whilst not physically accurate, does give slightly nicer results. I found that using the metallic tends to make the glass a little too bright, so I'm also going to plug the Fresnel value into the metallic to reduce this effect. Now a special little tip that most people don't know about. You can duplicate your material output node and change it to EV and cycles respectively. You can then plug one shader into the top output and the other into the bottom, and Blender will automatically detect which render engine is being used and swap the shader over for you. Now you have a shader that will work regardless of which render engine you're using. That's our material set up, but remember how I said that the model itself may be holding your glass back? Let's talk about why. If you're using your own model, it's possible your final glass shader may not look the same. That's because for glass, the model really does matter. So let me show you quickly how and why I modeled this cup the way that I did. I started by creating a cylinder, deleting the top face and scaling it to the rough shape of a cup. If we add a glass shader to it, you can see that we're getting some strange faceting. So the first thing that we need to do is set this to smooth shading. But even this still looks kind of strange. That's because the normals of our model are fully smoothed, and that's giving us a kind of magnification effect. To fix this, go to the object data, and under normals, check auto smooth. And that strange bulging effect should go away. This already looks heaps better, but it's still kind of weird. That's because our glass needs thickness for the refractions to work properly. If we add a solidify modifier, we can finally see things starting to look right. Just a couple more things. Firstly, let's add a bevel modifier to get rid of the perfectly sharp edges. Next, I'll add a subdivision modifier to make sure everything is perfectly smooth. And now it looks kind of like a science beaker. There's one final thing we need to finish this, and that's to add some thicker glass right at the bottom. To achieve this, I'll apply the solidify modifier, select the inside bottom vertices and shift them up ever so slightly. We can now see the bottom of the cup is getting more refraction from the thicker glass, and this looks much more realistic. As you can see, there's actually quite a lot that's needed to make realistic looking glass. It's not just enough to have a good glass shader. You also need to have these imperfections as well as a well-modeled object. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make other objects look realistic, check out this other tutorial where we cover edgeware, scratches, and dirt.